so the picture on the left is your cuffed ed tube and the picture on the right is your uncuffed ed tube so if you look at the uh, uncuffed ed tube you can also see the guide there because most of our uh, children uh, so you you probably don't need this guide in adults most of the time because it's going to be stiff and you can easily intubate them but for children sometimes the ed tubes are very very uh, narrow very very thin so it's very difficult uh, to intubate without the guide so that's why we have that over there and uh, coming to the parts of ed tube just look at the one uh, with, look at the cuff ed tube so you can see this is the inflated cuff and how do you inflate it you can see this pilot balloon in uh, blue color so over here you have to insert your uh, syringe and uh, fill in the air through this okay and this black line that you see that is the vocal cord guide so this is uh, basically an easier way to insert the ed tube so basically when you visualize your vocal cords this black line has to pass below the vocal cord level and that's how you easily intubate using this and on the uncuffed ed tube it's the whole black uh, shaded area that has to be below the vocal cord level so how do you decide what is the size so here itself we see that these two sizes are different right so we all know that there are different sizes and types of ed tubes so how do you decide what size ed tube we need so just remember one of these two formulas because it's going to get very confusing uh let's remember the formula for the uncuffed ed tube because i personally find it easier so what you're going to do is uh your child's age divide that by 4 and then to that number you add a 4 so i'll just give you an example so suppose this uh, suppose our child is 4 years old so 4 by 4 1 and then you add it with a 4 so 5 so when you are choosing an et tube for a child who is 4 years old you will go for a uncuffed et tube of size 5 okay and cuffed et tube you're just going to take one size smaller that is 4.5 okay because anyway you're going to get that extra 0.5 when you inflate the cuff so um you can take a size smaller okay and uh, where how do you know where to fix it so fixing number one you're going to follow the vocal cord guide anyway but however you have to confirm uh the position at the level of the lip right so that at that time what you're going to do is you're going to take the size of the et tube so suppose here we have uh, for a 4 year old child we've calculated as a ED tube size five, so five into three, which is fifteen. So at the level of the lip, you're gonna fix fifteen centimeters. Okay. So this is how you select the laryngoscope. So we also have different uh, sizes and laryngoscopes. So uh, look at this for the just just uh, don't get worried too much. I'll just explain in the further slides. So just uh, remember this much that you know for uh, younger age groups we prefer the Miller blade. and for older age groups we can go for the macintosh okay okay so miller and macintosh what are those two so those two are the types of laryngoscope blades that we know so uh, the miller blade is basically your straight blade and your macintosh blade is your curved blade okay so look at the difference over here what uh basically what i wanted to show you over here is how what is the technique and what is the difference between using these two blades so your curved the macintosh blade it goes into the valecula you don't hold on to your epiglottis your epiglottis remains free okay uh but we all know in younger age groups the epiglottis is pretty big and it obscures the airway so that's why we prefer the miller blade in younger age groups we hold on to the epiglottis we pull the epiglottis also up so that the airway is not obscured and we can easily intubate we can vocalize uh, we can visualize the vocal cords and we can easily intubate the child okay <clears throat> so uh, this is just showing you how it's done so whenever you pull after inserting the laryngoscope uh you don't pull upward you don't go down what you have to do is you have to apply the pressure upward and forward that is forward for the patient you're going to bring the you're going to bring the jaw up basically okay so just when you insert the laryngoscope pull it up 
that's all you that's all you have to do and make sure you don't damage the patient's teeth and tongue and other things okay okay and the other thing that we have to remember is we have to always be ready for any surprises because this is not a mannequin this is a real patient that we're dealing with so we have to be ready for surprises and uh, because we are prepared we are smart and we are prepared for surprises we are going to keep one size smaller and one size larger ready okay so suppose uh, for a four year child we calculated the et tube uh, size to be 5 so we are also going to keep a 4.5 and a 5.5 ready with us okay you're also going to keep your suction, uh, suction apparatus ready because there may be a lot of secretions and secretions always obscure our uh, vision and uh, our vocal cords so we have to keep the suction apparatus ready and after the intubation you have successfully intubated after the intubation you have to confirm the et position by using bag and mask ventilation so when you bag when you give the bag and mask ventilation what you are going to look for is the chest movements the, they have to be symmetrical chest movements you can uh, do the five point auscultation and hear the air entry you can uh, you also have to i mean your anyway your five point auscultation will include auscultating over the uh, stomach also uh but uh, you have to listen for the gastric insufflation sounds and if you hear that then you have to go over your intubation process again <clears throat> if your hospital or your facility has etco2 available then that is the most reliable measure basically etco2 is a sensor that you place at the end of the et tube and uh, that senses the level of co2 that comes out so basically if that etco2 detects co2 then that means the, your et tube is in the correct spot um check for the oxygen saturation if the uh, oxygen saturation is improving or not after your intubation bag and mask ventilation and the final thing that you're going to do is your chest x ray and on the chest x ray you will verify the et position okay can you all see this chest x ray so on this chest x ray uh just uh, can i hope you all can see the et tube so there is a, um, a line there's a radio opaque line in the area of the trachea which stops <clears throat> which stops at the level of uh, around t3 yeah i think it's around uh, t3 below just below 2 t2 and t3 between t2 and t3 it's uh, it stops so uh, and you can look at the carina over here the carina is free you can see the two bronchi going here and there so we know that this is in the right position so how do you know whether it's the right position or not so your uh, et tube has to be at the level between T two to T four. How do you calculate? So this is the first rib. So this will be your T one, T two, T three, T four. So it has to be somewhere in this area. It should not be obscuring the carina. It should not be into one of the bronchi. So that's how you know whether it's in the right spot or not. <coughs> so you have done everything. You have confirmed uh, the patient's uh, ET tube position. You have done your five point auscultation. You feel it's in the right spot. but your patient condition is not improving so what can you do next so you have to uh, remember this um, dope okay so dope dope stands for displacement of the tube so the tube could be displaced into it could have gone off into the so we we usually do a lot of um, maneuvers right we, we you might be doing a chest compression on the patient you might be doing a lot of things so th there is always a chance for the tube to get displaced even if you've put it in the right spot so if it gets displaced where can it go it can probably come out of the trachea it can be higher up it can go down it can go deep down into the bronchi it can go into the esophagus so that's about the displacement of the tube the number two thing in dope is obstruction of the tube obstruction of the tube usually happens because of thick mucus secretions because the patient would have vomited something and aspirated that into the tube so that is obstruction of the tube the third thing that can happen and is very very common is pneumothorax so uh, why do we so when we uh, you would have seen that the bag and mask for children is very very small compared to the bag and mask for the adults that is because children require very less pressure they require lesser volume compared to adults and that's why when you are very uh, enthusiastic and you just give one full bag you just press it very hard you are trying hard to save the patient's life but if you press the bag very hard if you give in lot of pressure you're going to cause a pneumothorax and that is going to be counterproductive so always remember give adequate pressure give adequate time for the breath to, for the chest to recoil and everything so remember 
P is pneumothorax and E is equipment failure. So there might be, if you've connected the patient to the ventilator, then the ventilator may be faulty. So always keep that in mind, okay? Because after all, it's just an, it's just an equipment, it's just a machine. So remember DOPE, if your patient's condition is not improving or if the, if the patient's condition has improved and again starts deteriorating also, please take a look at DOPE. 